and welcome to the Worldview Financial Report today, this evening. It is June 12th, 2024. June 12th, 2024. Here we are, prime time, basically, 6.30 p.m. Central Time. Coming up top of the hours, my news report, then Brandon House Live. We've got a great lineup here at Worldview Report. I hope you're telling all your family and friends about it. We have a lot of news to play for you tonight and talk about tonight. I say news to play because we have a lot of video clips. We love dropping in the video clips. Keep it moving. Keep it interesting. What are we going to talk about tonight? Let's talk about um, a Cuban Missile Crisis. Uh, here's the first one we're going to go to. Look at this. Cruise ship passenger snaps pictures of Russian warships headed to Cuba for official visit. We'll talk to Mike Weiner and Wes Peters. Mike was alive during the Cuban Missile Crisis. Many of you were as well. Uh, here we go. Bond giant Pimco sees another wave of bank failures coming as commercial mortgage trouble mounts. We'll get to this one as well. High exposure to commercial real estate poses a risk to regional banks, says Moody's. Uh, Anna Arzov. Arzov. Uh, here we go. There's a stock market crash coming in 2025 as the bubble of all bubbles burst. That's what one economist says. The greatest theft in the world. We'll get to that. And we've got some other things we want to talk to you about. Gentlemen, welcome to the broadcast. Wes Peters, Mike Weiner, thanks for being with us. Our pleasure. Good evening, Brandon. How are you today? I'm hanging in there. It's a great evening uh, here in the Mid-South. Hey, I want to go right away to this one we just talked about. Uh, cruise pa uh, ship passenger snaps picture of Russian warship headed to Cuba for an official visit. Let's play a little bit of this uh, video here. Flotilla, including a nuclear-powered submarine, it is being tracked by U.S. Navy and Coast Guard ships as the Russian flotilla is heading to Cuba. And out front has obtained pictures. Uh, a passenger on a celebrity cruise line ship, look at this picture, off the coast of Florida took these pictures as the warships passed by. He says they were just a couple thousand feet away. And he saw U.S. ships and planes tracking them. The passenger telling us, quote, I just happened to look outside and I saw one of the ships. So I went outside to investigate. I could see six ships at one time across the horizon. There have been ships in sight most of the day. I mean, just think about that. Most of the day, Russian warships next to a U.S. cruise ship. He adds, quote, I was surprised how close they are. We are not that far offshore. Meantime, in Moscow, Russian state television is touting the deployment of the ships off the U.S. coast as tensions increase with the U.S. And Matthew Chance is out front from Moscow tonight. These are the first images of the Russian flotilla steaming towards Cuba, just 90 miles off the U.S. coast. The Russian Defense Ministry says the strike group, including a nuclear-powered submarine, the Kazan, armed with modern caliber cruise missiles, is practicing the use of high-precision weapons. But it's really about Putin flexing his muscles on the international stage. Led by the flagship of Russia's northern fleet, the Admiral Gorshkov, which Russia's defense ministry says is normally equipped with latest Zircon hypersonic missiles. This is meant to deliver a powerful message to Washington. Russian state television has been celebrating the naval deployment, placing some of Russia's most powerful vessels in Cuban waters. The American media has been discussing the event, reports the Russian news anchor, claiming the Pentagon has no idea where our submarine is positioned. In fact, U.S. officials right. are downplaying. We'll hold it right there. Uh, very interesting story. Um, very interesting story. But of course, it's a little bit of propaganda in here because what they're not telling you guys is that NATO and the West have been poking a stick in Russia's eye over and over and over again. We got 10 CIA bases reportedly in Ukraine. We've had the CIA on the ground over there for a long time training the Ukrainians. We have British and uh, American troops over there on the ground, even if they're not wearing their uniforms, according to numerous reports. They are helping them key in the coordinates to go after Russia's uh, early advanced warning system. I am no apologist for Putin. Uh, but what I am is a reporter and a journalist and a news guy, and I just tell it the way it is. The neocons, Lindsey Graham, he came out and said the other day, 
that uh, there are trillions, trillions of dollars in natural resources in Ukraine. We can't let Russia get that. Did he slip up and tell us what this is really always, uh, really all about? Which is what a former general was his name, S Butler Smedley or Smedley Butler? Uh, Smedley G Butler. Yeah, a yeah. general, a uh, three or four star general from a gazillion of years ago said every war is about corporatism. Is that what this is really all about? So when they say that uh, Putin's flexing his muscles, well, maybe he has a reason to flex his muscles when the West and Great Britain are providing weapons and encouraging this to strike, including F, you know fighter jets, to strike deep inside Russia. Um, if Putin's war is with the federal government, not the American people, he might find a lot of the American people join his side for at least a period of time. The enemy of my enemy is my friend kind of thing. So I wonder, you guys are both smiling at that. I wonder if Putin is actually literally politically uh, thinking, you know, if I just uh, make all my issues about D.C., the federal government, I might have a lot of Americans in America on the lower 48 that are all for what I with me. Uh, you know, so I, I'm, I'm not I'm not picking a side on this when I'm for a constitutional form of government. I'm I think the federal government is the greatest terrorist organization now, probably in America and the world and the world as well. But uh, Putin may be making some political calculations here. But this this whole idea that somehow. Putin's just flexing his muscles and being crazy. I uh, know the crazies are the people in in uh, Great Britain and in DC that keep uh, escalating this thing with Putin. Wes, you, uh, go you ahead, Michael. Go ahead, Michael. You no, know, again, I was alive for that and most of the Roman wars and all that type of stuff. Like <laughs> Brown, I like to go into, but I was a young, really young boy in elementary school, and my sister was terrified. And in, in, in 62 October, when the Cuban Missile Crisis happened. The United States government was prepared to go to nuclear war with Russia just for getting ships near Cuba, just getting them near Cuba. Now, because of our government, which is more concerned, as you are talking about, financially than they are about politically and geopolitically, we are allowing these people to come 90 miles off our shore to set up whatever bases they want to, to break the Monroe Doctrine. We can even go into the Monroe Doctrine, which is another issue that, uh, that uh, President Kennedy went into in 62, about them coming into the uh, South America, which they already are. China and Russia are already in South America right now, and we're doing nothing about it. The problem is, you're absolutely right, Brandon, this is all about money. Who do we have running this country right now? A guy who's been making a living and went into politics with nothing and has been making a living off of government. And that's what the government's doing right now. And, and apparently influence peddling. And apparently and making his money off influence peddling. Russia and China are playing chess. We are playing checkers. And the bottom line, Biden, who has probably made more bad geopolitical decisions than anybody ever since he's been in office, now makes them geopolitically and financially. And this situation, which is going on, can be corrected. But right now, it's going to take a while. It's not going to wave a wand and it's all going to happen overnight. These people that are getting so close to the United States in Cuba and in the South America and in the Caribbean, be aware of the fact that and then people coming across our border that are 20 to 40 year old young people from China. What's all about? What's this all about? If you understand what I mean. Yeah, it's exactly all about right. Uh, Wes, what are your thoughts? Well, and let's not forget, uh, Brandon, that the West has frozen $300 billion of uh, Russia's money, and they're looking to double down and freeze more assets of Russia. And, um, you know, this is something that goes way back. You're exactly right. Uh, if you look at historically, uh, we're famous for going into other countries, destroying their infrastructure, their cities, their towns. And then, uh, lo and behold, after the war's over, U.S. contractors such as Halliburton uh, roll in to uh, rebuild those infrastructures. And uh, you look at all the uh, politicians in Washington that are on the inside that know ahead of time who's going to get those contracts. Uh, you know, it's like Paul Pelosi. The guy's never made a bad investment trade in his life. Uh, if you look at his trading history, but new drugs coming out, lo and behold, he's bought a position in that. If some bad news is coming out before it comes out, he sold his positions. So it is all about money, money and greed. And uh, Russia is steaming towards Cuba because they know uh, they don't fear the United States at all. And this goes back to, to Obama. 
um, you know, remember Re Re uh, Obama's uh, red line, you don't cross this red line and use chemical weapons. Uh, and what happens? They, they, they move the, the red line further down. And um, so this is, this is a test and, and they know that we're not going to do anything whatsoever. Uh, you look at uh, all of our ships over in the, uh, in the Middle East uh, that have been attacked or bases, you know, attacked what over 80 times and, and nothing was done about it. And then when they do finally do a strike, it's some ammo dump somewhere uh, in the, you know, in the middle of the desert. So uh, I'm not one bit surprised. And I think as the election gets closer, uh, if, if China and Russia believe that, that Trump is going to win, if they believe the polls and they think Trump's actually going to get in office, I think they're between now and November, they're only going to get more aggressive. And don't forget, China still has its eye on Taiwan. And, um, uh, you know, they'll probably watch what happens with, uh, with Russia's um, uh, ships right off uh, uh, Cuba there, uh, 90 miles from our coast. And uh, they're probably going to act accordingly. Oh, of course they are. Yeah, absolutely. China's well, already said, in here with police stations and all the rest of the stuff, buying our farmland, doing things that we never would have allowed previously, which is going on right now. And you're absolutely right. There's a lot of provocation that's going on. We're, prov we're very provocative as the United States in trying to villainize Russia. We did that with Trump uh, when we tried to say everything is Russia collusion, like the notebook was Russia collusion, the laptop. And guess what? It's not Russian collusion. It's collusion within the United States. And, and what have we done about, uh, what did we ever do about the balloons flying over nothing. our missile silos? You know, we did we did nothing at all. Yeah, absolutely nothing. Uh, let's go back to Cuba, 1962, Kennedy. Uh, there is a movie that I've watched many times, 13 Days. Let me just play the official trailer. Uh, just give a sense for those maybe who were not alive then of the tension, because uh, uh, it, it seems to be a very historical uh, movie that came out several years ago. It gives us an idea of how we are approaching, I'm not saying we're at, but are certainly approaching uh, what was being dealt with by the Kennedy administration. What is it? On Sunday morning, one of our U-2s took these pictures. The Soviets are putting ballistic missiles into Cuba. One gentlemen, let's have it. In the southeast, as far north as Washington, D.C., are in range of these weapons, and in the event of a launch, would have only five minutes of warning. In those five minutes, they could kill 80 million Americans. We have to get those missiles out. The Soviet understands only one language, action. Sir, I think we have to issue pre-invasion orders. I got a bad feeling about what's going on in there. We've got a bunch of smart guys. We lock them in a room, and we come up with some solution. Strikes is a minimum response the Joint Chiefs will accept. No, no, no! There is more than one option here. America is in danger from nuclear war. This is a setup. They want a war, Jack, and they're arranging things to get one. You're in a pretty bad fix, Mr. President. Or well, maybe you haven't noticed you're in it with me. Three, two. Good evening, my fellow citizens. A lot of things are going wrong today. When more things go wrong, people will become more nervous and it will be very hard to avoid going to war. Sometimes there is only one right choice and you thank God when it's so clear. Stop that firing! Nobody ever, ever gets between us. I'm prepared to wait for my answer until hell freezes over. I am the Commander-in-Chief of the United States and I say when we go to war. Well, uh, indeed, the history does show that those generals were pushing for war. Uh, we have now had declassified documents like Operations, uh, what was it, Operations Northwinds or Northwoods uh, that showed that the Pentagon uh, generals, some of them were saying, hey, let's uh, set up false flags down in Florida. Let's carry out uh, bombings or terrorist attacks in Florida and we'll blame it on Cubans, and this will then uh, get the American people to want to go into Cuba. The American people had no stomach for that. Uh, but the, apparently the deep state was going on clearly during the Kennedy administration, and he thought these guys were nuts. Um, of course, we also know that he eventually fired the CIA director, who ended Dulles, who ended up being on the Warren Commission to, I think, cover up the assassination of that president, John F. Kennedy, who fired him, uh, because again, he was going against the deep state. He was going against the military uh, and the military industrial complex and, and, and the Federal Reserve and so many of these groups. 
But notice again, uh, these guys were pushing him into war. Nothing's changed. Nothing's changed these many, many decades later. These guys in D.C., the neocons, the people in Great Britain, they seem to be pushing us toward war, Michael Weiner. Well, I think something has changed. We had a great leader then. We don't have a great leader. We, not only have, we don't even have a leader. So uh, we don't even know who's calling the shots right now in this administration. We have no idea. We just hear things coming out and it just comes together and that's it. But uh, right now, Donald Trump uh, is a guy who was going against the deep state. So they have used every power possible, both financially, uh, through the judicial, judicial system, doing things unconstitutionally, everything they possibly can to stop him, because this is something that's not been around. Actually, some people believe it started in World War after World War II, the CIA formation from the OSS, but the it actually goes back all the way to Woodrow Wilson. So this deep state garbage is something that in order for us to save our, our, our republic, it, it has to be cut out. And if we don't cut it out, great people like Kennedy will never get in again, or like Trump or Reagan. Yeah, well, here it is, Operation Northwoods. Anyone can look it up. There's the declassified document. That's just one page where, again, the CIA and the military industrial complex were calling for uh, carrying out and staging false flag terrorist attacks in the U.S., uh, blame it on Cuba so we could go to war. Operation Northwoods, a uh, memo from March 13th, 1962. It's several pages. You ought to look it up. Uh, you, Michael or uh, Wes, before we move on, do you want to make any comment? Well, I was going to kind of say the opposite of Michael. I was going to tell the American people they could sleep easy at night because I'm sure Joe Biden and his generals and Joint Chiefs of Staff are working <laughs> late in the evening uh, to solve this, uh, you know, uh, the have a deterrent. Uh, of course, I say that uh, jokingly, you know. Um, Biden's probably going to find out today when he watches CNN that there's uh, uh, Russian ships steaming towards Cuba. He, he'll say, I, I learned about it when you did on the news. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. so um, let me ask you this, guys. What what do people need to do to prepare? I mean, I don't get financial advice. I get financial opinion. Uh, you know what? what do you guys recommend people do for all the I mean, we have so many things we're, we're going to get into banking collapse, real estate collapse. So many things going on. The BRICS, the end of the American petrodollar going to World War Three. I mean, uh, what uh, should people uh, be doing, they, in your opinion? They, they, well, they, if you remember, Brandon, when COVID started and everyone's running to get their, their masks and their hand sanitizer and their toilet paper, uh, the, those shelves were empty, you know? And, uh, and then if you could find those uh, supplies, uh, the, the price gouging was unbelievable. So you wanna be, as I always say, proactive. You wanna have freeze dried food. You wanna have water, even water filtration. You wanna have a generator, flashlights, batteries. Uh, uh, additional medications. Uh, you want to make a list of all the things that you would need, uh, you know, canned goods, um, and and have that in advance. Before COVID started, I've, I've been a little bit of a prepper uh, for some time. And um, I remember my daughters were in high school and they each had a girlfriend over after school doing homework and eating a snack at the table. And I had some boxes show up. And uh, I'm, I pull out these tubs out of these boxes and the girls are like, what's that? And I turned it around towards them. I said, it's spaghetti, <laughs> you know? And they're like, what are you buying that for? And I said, well, hopefully we, we never need it. But if we if we do, you're gonna be thankful that we have it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well and, I didn't so ask, I would, and I didn't ask you to say that, nor did I know you're gonna say that, did I, Wes? Uh, no. No, okay. It's, so with common, that being, it's common sense. Yeah, so with that being said, because I am a capitalist, we got to fund this program and fund the network. Take a look at this, folks. Now that he's recommending this, here you go, worldviewbeef.com. This is not beef crumbles, folks. This is real prepper steak. This is real steak, 100% uh, all natural, no mRNA jabs. Uh, it'll last at least 10 years. You just uh, hydrate it in water for about 12 minutes and then, and, and, then, and then add it to your food. Cook it, warm it up. Uh, as you see there, worldviewbeef.com, worldviewbeef.com. Here's a bag of it right here. This is a ribeye. Again, we're using this to supplement our freeze-dried food. He mentioned the freeze-dried food. Here's our store, wvwtvstore.com, wvwtvstore.com. Just click emergency freeze-dried food. Just click that. It'll all pop up the various kinds of freeze-dried food we have. We have three months, six months. 
we have a year, we have all kinds of freeze-dried food available to you uh, as you scroll through this store. And we highly recommend you get it. Not only do we have emergency freeze-dried food, we have emergency uh, supplies. So again, click on emergency foods, not no, click on, um, well, that's emergency food supplies right there. But you need to click on emergency supplies as well right here. And when you click on that, all supplies, then what you find is all kinds of things. Uh, potassium iodine to protect your thyroid. Uh, we had about a thousand bottles of that. That's gone fast. Uh, that's protect your thyroid in the event of a nuclear event. 100 hour candles, indoor stoves, outdoor stoves, uh, surgical kits, uh, water purifiers, as he mentioned. Uh, let's go to another one. Let's go to worldviewtalk.com. He mentioned again generators. I have a solar generator. Uh, if you click that red button, it'll move on over. You can see the, the rest of them. I have this one right here, EcoFlow Delta Pro 400. Now, I have a Generac that runs this whole studio, but if the uh, natural gas line gets cut or disrupted somehow, uh, I need a backup for my backup. Not that I can run the whole studio on this. Some of these, they say you can run your whole house, but at least I'd be able to charge lights and uh, you know flashlights and, and cell phones for whatever, if they would work. I could certainly charge my satellite phone and you can get one of those right here. Uh, I have this one right here, the 9555 satellite phone. Uh, you can get these phones for free with a very reasonable monthly plan. Uh, and of course you get about 450 minutes of text and talk. They have other plans available as well um, that you can get. Again, these are satellite phones. A lot of families are going over to these, by the way, because the, not only are they uh, more dependable, but they, 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 they don't know where you're at. You're within a 50 mile radius. That's the best they can do. Uh, whereas your cell phones are tracking you within a feet or so, foot or so. They do have cell phones that don't track you and don't store your data. So again, worldviewtalk.com. And then he mentioned meds. We highly recommend you go to twc.health forward slash Brandon, twc.health forward slash Brandon to get these meds on hand. Click, hover over med kits and look at all them. You got the first aid emergency kit. You got the travel emergency. You have the medical uh, emergency kit. But this is the one also I'm very uh, uh, much demanding that people get. This is the contagion kit. Should they push this bird flu pandemic on us, uh, don't be shocked if they withhold meds from people uh, like they did during COVID, ivermectin, egg CQ. You're going to want to have these things. I saw another article today. I guess this guy was like a Harvard trained guy. And he was saying, you better get these things on hand because the, the, the medical industrial complex isn't going to want you to have cheap, uh, and very reliable treatment. They're going to want you to go through their through their regiment, which we know their protocols killed a lot of people, right? That's what a lot of doctors are saying, MD. So go to twc.health forward slash Brandon. Uh, use that URL. You'll save money and uh, support the broadcast at the same time. So I thought I'd drop all that in there because Wes just laid out a bunch of things, communications, generators, medication, food, and we, we actually have all that for you. Uh, I see you were trying to jump in and make a comment. Uh, yeah, I mean, the other major thing that you brought up is how does it affect us and what do they do monetarily? Because that's what we're here for. And yeah. the reality is these people right now that we talk to, uh, there's so many of them that call up in a moment, they'll watch a show and they'll say, okay, we need to do something. We need to take care of it. Wes and I spend time, we go over it. And then we're fighting the exact thing that they're trying to protect themselves against. They call up their financial person, which we're the Antichrist to. Why are we the Antichrist? Because we're not a, a situation where we're sitting back trying to make ongoing money. We are not a situation where we're trying to uh, generate income. We are trying to be a caboose. We're trying to protect the train. We're trying to make sure that when these problems happen, you can work through it. And the problem that many people do not realize when they call up, I just talked to somebody the other day, called me two days ago, said, I desperately want to do something. I need to take care of it. We spent a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of information, and then calls me back up two days later and says, well, I've discussed this with my finance. And I said, I really don't care. Your this is your money. Just like you're talking to these people about eating dinner and all the rest. Do they invite the whole world over to their table to eat? The reality is, is this is your money, this is your finances, this is your way of life for your family. And if you're going to protect it, stop thinking about what everybody else is going to do and how they're going to tell you what to do and man up or woman up. Well, here's the question. Is your financial planner going to write the check and make up the difference? No. After you follow their advice 
and uh, you're you're standing there without any ability to respond to what's happened. And again, no one's saying move 50% of your assets into precious metals. You're talking 5, 10, 15 percent. Uh, I mean, if, if he's going to lose everything he's worked for, your financial planner, because you move a small percentage of your your money outside of his control, then he's not a very good financial planner now, is he? And by the way, not to paint all financial planners, but go look at how many of these financial planners have filed for bankruptcy that have serious financial problems. I've known some of them right here in the Mid-South. They're financial planners, but they file bankruptcy. And I've known more than one of them to do that. So the point is, be very careful uh, t having someone else tell you about how to manage your money. If some of you knew how well off their your financial planner was managing their own personal money, uh, I think you'd be shocked and horrified to think you're taking financial advice from that person. That's my opinion. Let's go to this video on the great taking and get a response from you guys on this. That we were not told about. So in 2008, I noticed the first failure of a broker dealer. So I was expecting there to be a lot of insolvencies. I was paying attention. And the thing that shocked me was that the client accounts in this broker dealer were encumbered in the bankruptcy estate of the broker that never could have happened before. In all of the history of securities, they were personal property. And if the broker failed, you would say, I'm sorry, you're out of business. Here's where you can transfer my assets. That did not happen in this case. So I started digging into what could possibly have changed. And this was as serious as a heart attack, given that we were going into this meltdown at that time. That's when I discovered it had been done through changes to the Uniform Commercial Code in the United States. This had been done in all 50 states so it was something that could be done very quietly over a long period of time and did not have to be done at the federal level, didn't draw attention. What they did was to create a new legal construct of a security entitlement. Now prior to this, as I said, securities for 400 years were personal property. This concept of a security entitlement severed that. That's its purpose. So what people then have in institutions and uh, pension funds, even sophisticated investors, all they have is an entitlement. It's a claim. It's a contractual claim, which is very weak in the event of insolvency. So it's an appearance of ownership. It's sometimes referred to as beneficial ownership, which sounds nice, but what it means is that you receive dividends, you receive a proxy, you are the owner of title. You can, of course, you can buy it and sell it, but you can see in documents that I've found that the legal owner is actually the entity that controls the security with a secured interest. They are the legal owners of the property. So now you have a contractual claim. Next, all of the securities are held in pooled form. So you have no specific identification. It used to be that with paper certificates, they were numbered. You had a specific numbered bond or stock share certificate. So now they're fungible, fungible bulk, book entry form, pooled. Further, we know, and it is absolutely irrefutable from the Fed's own response to a questionnaire from the EU, that even segregated accounts, even people or institutions that have been told that their securities are segregated are in the same pool and entitled to only a pro rata share in the event of an insolvency. Of all right, let's hold it right there due to time. We're gonna have to move. We're gonna got like a minute and a half left. Wes, what does all this mean? It means you don't own your stocks. You know, it, it means that uh, if that uh, firm gets in trouble and, and, and is losing hemorrhaging money, uh, that your stocks can be sold to, to cover their losses. And uh, everything is commingled. Like you said, stock certificates used to have serial numbers on them. They no longer have that. They're, they're all in one big pool and fungible means that they're all the same. So they put them all in one pool, just like dollars. Um, so a lot of, nobody knows this really. Hardly anybody knows you do not own your stocks. And that's just a snippet of this, uh, this the great taking documentary. And anybody that wants to watch the whole thing, 
reach out to me and I will send it to you. And it's long, it's an hour and 11 minutes long, I believe, but well worth taking the time to watch because there is a lot of information in there that most people have no clue. So again, to get that, uh, he'll send it to you if you just text him, 602-558-8585, 602-558-8585. Uh, text him and Wes will see you get the link to the full documentary, The Great Taking. Uh, also, uh, he'll send you that free no obligation packet of information, how you can uh, take possession of precious metals and not be under their thumb. Closing comment, Michael, we got about 15 seconds. Wes is absolutely right what he's saying, but I'll make a very simple comment about when they talk about the stocks, think about the people who are holding funds and hedge funds with uh, Bear Stearns. They lost everything because those oh. funds were held by the company. Same thing, same thing. You have nothing, you don't own a thing. It's all the companies. Uh, again, maybe that's what Klaus Schwab says, by 2030, you'll own nothing and be happy. 602-558-8585, uh, you want the free no obligation packet on precious metals, uh, and then maybe how to put uh, gold into your IRA, which we should talk about a little bit more tomorrow. tomorrow. So yeah. we'll do that as well. 602-558-8585, 602-558-8585. Just text Wes your name and address. He'll send that packet of information on. Thank you, gentlemen. That's the Worldview Financial Report for this evening, June 12, 2024. Thanks for watching. May God save America.